Hello, you're watching Avenue X, and today let's talk about the recently suddenly airdropped drama Jun Zimeng, A League of Noblemen. This is a 29 episode web drama that has just airdropped on Tencent. Previously, it was named Zhang Gong An, based on a novel written by the web novel writer Da Feng Gua Guo. The drama Jun Zimeng is almost completely different from the original book that it's based on. Also, the original author have publicly denounced this drama due to that Song Weilong is the lead of the two main leads of this drama and he was once the lead of a drama made by Yu Zheng which plagiarized this author's work. So due to all the complicated previous history, the author gives no appreciation <laughs> to the drama adaptation. The drama is produced by Tencent and it is directed by Yang Fan. Jia Xiaoxiong, written by four credited script writers. On January the 30th, Tencent suddenly airdropped this drama without doing any promotion. It literally just showed up on their website. They dumped out the first 10 episodes on the first day. For the airing schedule of this drama, they're airing it every week, 10 episodes on the day. The drama is led by Jin Boran and Song Weilong, and I think everybody who's watching this video knows that this is also one of the many BL adaptation dramas that was lined up and ready to air and boom, <laughs> kind of got erased and disappeared. Technically speaking, this is really not a BL drama because the original novel really isn't a BL drama and it has no CP at all. But when it got adapted, uh, clearly casting these two guys made during the time where so many BL dramas were made, it's pretty clear that what the platform want this drama to be. So in the process of adapting, they definitely tried to sell it on that angle. Now, if I know it got out after pretty much a soft ban on BL adaptation, you look at a drama, there's almost nothing left in terms of shipping CPs. After I've watched the first 10 episodes, I'll give it a rating honestly at goldmine slash landmine. The reason I don't put it on the positive end, which usually would be one gold mine for dramas that I think are okay, but really not that impressive, is it is so bland. When this drama went out, I immediately went to watch three episodes, and then the next day I watched five, and then the next day I finished watching the rest. So I was pretty quick catching up with it. Then it came to the time when I need to film my weekly video reporting what goes on that week, which is just a week that went by. I forgot to talk about it, literally. During writing down the notes, during filming, during editing, after I've uploaded it to YouTube that night when I was sleeping, I suddenly remembered, shit, tomorrow the video is going out and I forgot to talk about Jun Zimo. I've watched 10 episodes and I forgot about its existence the day after. So let's start with things that I think are still watchable and may appeal to certain audiences if that's your thing. On the positive end, number one, its overall production quality for a period drama is pretty nice. And thinking about this, it's actually a drama that has been made for a while, was intended to go out properly a year ago, even more. It actually doesn't look outdated. And compared to a lot of very cheaply made period dramas, this is on the higher end of things. It has a very consistent look. The cinematic look, uh, the color palette lasts through the whole thing. So it definitely has design. It has a little bit ambition of creating good imagery. Although the drama has a fictional time setting called Yong Chao, it is, you can tell, 90% based on Tang Dynasty. So that's why I'm dressed up like this in a very Tang Dynasty style. Although it's not very accurate, the rough outline of things still follows that time. There's this stage dance and stage design I was super impressed with. Then the second thing is its all original voice, which I would always encourage. And a lot of it actually sounds like live recording instead of ADR, which is also very hard for period dramas to do these days. Overall attitude is very good, but we definitely have to talk about that in the negative parts as well, which comes down to, yes, I encourage, that's a good attitude, but then, if you can do it properly, maybe dubbing overall for the quality of the production would be a better choice type of situation. Then the third good thing about this drama, if you want to look at good looking men with a quotation mark that is to your preference and standard, this drama is led by Jin Boye and Song Weilong and they will definitely take 90% of the screen time. If Song Weilong and Jin Boye is not your cup of tea, then <laughs> I guess you don't need to go into this drama anymore. So that's it, all the positive things. Is there anything else I can think of? Not really. So now let's get to the part of my review. All the problems I can rant about and why I don't give it a high rating. Problematic point number one. Oh my god, the line delivery of Song Weilong. 
This is when actually I think it is still better to have a dubbing actor. In recent years, the only drama I've watched him leading that I was able to sit through it and thinking it's actually pretty nicely done is the Song Qian and Song Wei Long led drama Xia Yi Zhan Xing Fu. He really suits contemporary dramas much, 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 much more than period dramas. Let's just pick out the line delivery thing. <laughs> Okay, so because this is all original actor's own voice, you can hear the clear comparison between somebody who can actually speak proper Mandarin and somebody who cannot. I pride myself at the fact that I am really good at telling words, even if you have a strong accent of a language. As long as I am professed enough in that language, I understand what you're talking about. But I'd say Song Weilong challenges my ability to the greatest level to date of any young actors in Chinese drama land. Even Wang Hedi, although he has a strong accent, he can still dictate it very clearly so that you know which character he's saying, although it's not accurate. It doesn't create difficulty of understanding. Song Weilong, when you don't look at the subtitles, there is about 30% of the information that he's delivering that doesn't reach me, that cannot be deciphered. I totally cannot tell which character he's saying. I have to look at the subtitle. I'm like, oh, he's saying that. Huh. I don't think Jing Boran is very good at line delivery either. He chops his words like that. He talks with so much effort. It's like he hasn't really spoken the language enough to get fluent at it. And he has problematic rhythm as well. But in comparison, Song Weilong's line delivery makes Jiung Boran's line delivery look like a teacher level, master level class. That's how bad a contrast there is between two male leads. In an ideal world, I'd want Jiung Boran to improve on his line delivery for his drama and I'd want Song Weilong to get dubbed. You get paid for doing your roles and it's your job and you don't do it professionally and you don't do it properly. It's just wrong and you shouldn't be allowed to work like that. Unfortunately, this is the standard of current Chinese drama land. Then we have to talk about his acting. I just feel all the supporting roles are better than the main roles. Jin Boran is okay. He can pull off an ancient time official who's well educated, who has that air. His posture is good enough and his acting is convincing enough. But when it goes to Song Weilong, there's not even one moment when he's on screen that he looks like a period drama character. The way he walks, the way he holds himself, looks like he's a 21st century guy who just time traveled yesterday into a period time setting. He doesn't even know how to walk in that type of shoes and costume. I literally get pulled out of the story constantly by his accent, by his posture, by his presence. It just does not feel like a period drama character. And then he's so wooden. Uh, blank, vacant, handsome, but like nothing goes on face. He was better and he was more normal. He was watchable in contemporary dramas with Song Qian. In period dramas, not the case. Given, given. Okay, this drama is quite a long time ago, not like yesterday or last year, so maybe he's improved now, 2023, but in his drama, I can't watch him acting. You know, Guo Cheng, who plays his good friend, is so much better than him. And then also, actually, Jin Boran's best friend in this drama, the other guy uh, who kind of constantly supports him, is also much more relaxed at acting than Jin Boran. So the problem with this drama is you have two male leads, but then they each have a good friend, and those two friends actually act better than those two leads. So uh, you have a problem. The last thing that is not good about this drama is, as a crime detective drama, it's boring. It doesn't have interesting cases. The procedure of figuring it out is unexciting. And if you want to scrutinize, the logic sometimes don't work out at all. I mean, literally, Song Weilong resolves to hypnotizing people to solve the cases. He has magical power. He can do this thing thing with a bowl of water and then the other person will tell him everything. I'm like, uh-huh, you have that buff? Then what's the point of having a detective story? You can just grab everybody and just dung them and then you're done. And then if you take that part out, just look at the cases, they're also very bland. And then this drama somehow looks like Imperial Coroner if you look at the two male leads relationship. Then Strange Tales of Tang Dynasty if you look at how they deal with those really mysterious cases. And then when you think about the whole hypnotizing thing, it reminds you of Tianjin Mystic. So it's kind of like a Frankenstein <laughs> drama of like stitching all those elements from other dramas, but it cannot do anything as well as those dramas. And I think also due to the BL ban, they definitely edited a lot of stuff out. If you look at, apart from episode one, everything is like really short, 30 ep minutes per episode, and they're clearly plot that they cut out. Making things don't link together, you know that there was a scene that totally is cooking on the CP. It's the sugar. It's Jin Boran and Song Weilong selling it, but then they cut it out because it wouldn't 
be able to air. So now, <laughs> the last thing you could possibly sell this drama on, which is CP, is also deleted. There's nothing really worth watching now <laughs> left in the drama. To be honest, I think Jin Boran and, and his good friend, who is also a, an official, before Song Wei Long's role even comes into his life's picture, and then Song Wei Long and his good buddy, and these two CPs are better than Jin Boran and Song Wei Long's CP. They should just stay with their good friends and be done with the story. A League of Noblemen, Jun Zemeng, is a story that is paralyzed in all departments and angles that could possibly sell this drama on. It really has no might. DN, the point where you can sell things on. And I think the only motivation people would have to just go in and check it out is just to see oh, if the two guys look good in costumes. And I think the only value it has is for future editors in the world to just grab a cutaway of a really pretty shot of something out here, out there, or even make up their own stories using the footages from this drama and editing their music video MV or totally create their own story. It is a bit sad that this drama can only be like this today. But but I have a feeling that even if all the CP lines didn't get cut, it still wouldn't be very successful. Just based on what you've seen now, they cannot sell the characters very convincingly or the relationships very convincingly. And as a detective story, it just is not a good detective story. So even if they didn't cut out all those CP selling scenes and shots, it probably still wouldn't be really successful in any way. It really hasn't been that long. It's like a year and a half after the whole BLN shut down. But think about how fast time goes by and then how quickly things Things improve or change the market drama land how many great dramas we've seen in the first month of 2023 couple of dramas that i think is gonna stay as hot topics and on the drama land sort of um achievement list for a long time to come and it's only the first month so suddenly this drama now when it comes out is just a bit irrelevant and it's the universe's decision to put things out at a certain time in the space and time continuum so it is what it is. That will be the end of this video from Avenue X on the drama Jun Zemeng. Thank you for watching Avenue X. If you want to see better Tang Dynasty detective stories, I highly recommend that drama. Please take care. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.